Good morning, and welcome to the planning phase of making a system or a program. We're exploring the SDLC, and this is a breakout talking about the planning phase and things that you would look into during the planning phase to make sure your project can get done, and they call it feasibility. Let's go ahead and look at some of the parts of testing. Okay. All right, the planning phase, you have to know where you're going to get there. It's something very important where if you don't put down your goals correctly, you're gonna end up with a problem where you don't actually provide a service in your system, either an entertainment or a proper database or anything. You have to make sure what it is you're aiming for before you go forward. <clears throat> So let's look at the SDLC real quick. That's in another video before this one in the playlist. And let's go ahead and review what it is. The software development life cycle outlines the stages of software development from initial concept to final development. Key phases include planning, analysis, design, implementation, maintenance, ensuring and maintenance, ensuring structured and effective project management. We're in the planning phase today. Okay, the importance of planning. Effective planning with the SDLC minimizes risks and ensures that resources are allocated efficiently. It aligns stakeholders' expectations and provides a clear roadmap, increasing the likelihood of delivering a success full software product on time within a budget. Proper planning can cut expenses and raise the quality of your project. Okay, so let's talk about concept tips. You go to your board and you go through all of your brainstorming to see what it is you're working on, and then you do concept testing to help define your project. Define and purpose. Concept testing is the process of assessing a new idea or product the moment it arises, aiming to gather feedback, validating assumptions, and understanding potential market viability. Its primary purpose is to minimize the risk before significant investments are made in development. If a concept is tested, it can be more easily planned and find funding that is appropriate to the project. Okay, methods of concept testing. Key methods of concept testing include surveys to gauge customer interest, focus groups or in-depth discussions, and prototypes that allow users to interact with the concept. Each method has provided valuable, each method provides valuable insights that inform decision-making about a product's future. One of the things that I did in graduate school is I created an artifact and to check if it's viable, I did a survey after they had used the artifact to find out if it was effective. It was effective in learning and it was effective in interest. So concept testing can have a number of things. Interviews, testing an artifact, um, doing some feasibilities on cost breakdown. So let's go into some of the things you should do in, in testing if it's feasible. Okay, analyzing the results. Analyzing concept testing revolts involve interpreting data collection from feedback to identify strengths, weaknesses, and areas for improvement. Metrics such as consumer preferences and willingness to play, pay guide adjustments before progressing in the development life cycle. So you're gonna go over your results. Some of the things to include is a feasibility analysis. A feasibility analysis looks at more than one factor. We've got four in here to look at. What is feasibility? Feasibility analysis evaluates the practicality of a purpose of a project or a system by assessing a potential challenges and benefits. Its purpose is to provide a clear direction for the decision makers before the proceeding. Feasibility means, is it possible? Is it feasible that we're going to do this project? Technical feasibility assesses whether a technology required for a project is available and capable of delivering the desired outcomes. It involves analyzing system reliability, performance, and integration. 
If you are performing this assessment, you will go over the technical building blocks to make sure you have the appropriate tools. Artifacts in this that prove what you intend to achieve will work is something that can be tested during technical feasibility. Economic feasibility examines whether the project is financially viable and justifiable. It includes cost-benefit analysis, examining a return on investment, and overall financial impact for the organization. Sometimes the reason to make a system is not just economic, though. You have to write down the return on investment of doing the project in your feasibility study. It might be dollars and it might not. It might be a time save that equals dollars. It might be something where it publicizes the company. But you have to write down what you're going to get from investing in the program. That helps you get funding. Operational feasibility. Operational feasibility focuses on the organizational capacity to implement and maintain the system. It assesses the effects on the operations, workflow, and staff training requirements necessary for success. So you're finding out if your system can actually be used. If you have the human resources and everything you need to make it come to complete. Conducting feasibility studies involves gathering data through methods such as surveys, expert interviews, market analysis, and this comprehensive approach helps to identify risks and opportunities. We're going to do a breakout right now in interviewing to go over that last piece and how it can be used to help develop the project. Evaluating feasibility outcomes requires analyzing the collected data to forge conclusions on project viability. This analysis aids in decision-making processes regarding project initiation and modification. Okay, stakeholder interviews. Interviews are a great way to find out what they need for a system and what the system needs to do. Let's look at this, the purpose of interviews. Stakeholder interviews aim to gather critical insights and clarify user needs, ensuring the final system aligns with expectations. They help identify potential challenges and opportunities by engaging key individuals involved in the project. This also can be done on entertainment projects to make sure that the project has a market and will capture enough customers. Preparing for interviews. Effective preparation involves defining clear objectives, creating structured questions, and selecting appropriate stakeholders to interview. This step ensures that interviews yield relevant and actionable insights for the planning phase. Conducting the interviews during the interviews, active listening, and open-ended questions facilitate meaningful dialogue. Establishing rapport and encouraging stakeholders to share their perspectives candidly lead to richer data and clearer requirements. Sometimes you can do a focus group. A focus group can be used during this phase to get a, re a recorded dynamic analysis for the proposed project or system. Participants being able to talk about the problems and solutions can be very valuable during planning. Okay, analyzing interview data. Post-interview analysis involves categorizing responses into themes and identifying key requirements. Synthesizing insights helps inform decision-making and shapes the direction of the SDLC process, ensuring stakeholders' needs are met. You bring this back and it can be a brainstorming phase where you look at what they need to find out if they're going to do what you need them to do. Um... You analyze this and put it into your feasibility study, putting it all together. Doing a feasibility study that includes interviewing the organization, make sure that the system that you are developing has a purpose and will be accomplishable. Skipping this phase can cause disorganization and make products unfunctional. This phase can set up a project for success if properly done. All right. Thank you for watching your, this video. Please hit like and subscribe if you want more content. This video was made with Prezi as an AI companion on the slides. The link is in the doobly-doo if you want to use it. In the links below, you can also find a tip jar, and you can tip me for me to do a video for you. All right. Thank you, and have a great day.